So we're out here to talk about some big bales and, and what happens when you bale it with a little bit of high moisture on and the spontaneous combustion that's happened. I'm thinking back the last couple of days, there was a fire about a week ago um, at a fell's place out in Chilliwack that caught fire. Again, from the big bales, um, baling with a little bit of high moisture in, stacking them into a barn really tight where the heat from the bale can't perspire and it just keeps building up and building up. So with the big bales versus a small bale, if you look at a small bale that, that weighs between 50 and 65 pounds, there's a lot less density in that bale. So that heat tends to perspire out a lot faster. What happens with the hay is that even though we cut it down, we tether it out, we let it sit for a week, when you're making big bales, it has to be drier than the small bales because of the amount of actual physical material that you have in the bale. The center of the bale is where the heat accumulates. On the outside, it's going to perspire out. The, what happens with the plant, even though you've cut it down and you baled it, it still continues to perspire or use up some of the sugars in the plant as it still tends to, to basically wilt out, I guess is a term, or sweat out. So sometimes when you go ahead and you bale, and you bale above 15% moisture, it's gonna start a heating process. So it starts a bacteria process that eats the sugars in the, um, in the, in the hay, basically. So orchard grasses, sometimes they're worse because they're higher in sugar content, and that bacteria tends to multiply quite rapidly. Once you get above 120 degrees, it can go either way. It can start cooling down, which is fine, but the whole process basically starts from uh, the day you bale it, till 21 days. In 21 days time, if it's still below, let's say 100 degrees, it will never really get there anymore. It basically is cool. Like this hay too, this guy was really smart. These are two bales stacked on top of each other and he's left them out in the field. He's baled this about two days ago. The weather forecast is good for the next week. He's probably gonna let him sit out here for the week. And the reason why he's doing that, it's gonna go through a bit of a sweating or a heating process, even though this comes back at 10 or 12%. He wants to make sure there's enough air moving around the bale that we don't run into any problems of the heat building up. The worst thing you can do with these bales is bale them, put them in the, in the barn and pack them tight together because it's the center of the bale where the heat has to perspire out. If the heat doesn't perspire out, it keeps building. So it goes from 100 degrees to 120 to 130 to 150. Once we start reaching 170 degrees, a different set of bacteria start to multiply in there and then it goes to spontaneous combustion where it can just blow up just like that. That process takes 21 days. This fellow's hay that burnt up out in Chilliwack was 22 days that it burnt up. Of the 20 barns that have burnt up in the last 30 years, most of them happen around that 20 to 25 day window where the heating basically has got to that 170 degrees and it basically blows up. So another thing to think about too is that if you're going to make bales and the moisture is above 15%, you're way better off to round bale it. Round bale it and wrap it and once you wrap the hay, no oxygen can get in, so that process stops right away. Because on these big bales, even though they don't catch fire, if you get heating in the bale, that's burning up a lot of the sugars, which should basically go to feed the rumen bacteria in the cow. And so what happens then, those sugars are burnt up, they're not available anymore. So sometimes if you can't get the moisture down really, really dry, then forget it. Just round bale it, wrap them, put all the knives in on the round bale to make sure all the knives are in so that they're very easy to feed. It comes apart in three inch chunks. Then at least you have no worry about the hay deteriorating down, the feed value stays really high, and there's no way that hay will ever catch fire. So again, big bales are good as long as they're dry enough. If you can't get dry enough, don't think twice about it. Round bale them, put all the knives in, cut it up, and you'll never run into those issues. We'll show you another guy who basically on his storage, he stores them about two feet apart and he checks them. So once they go in there, he'll check them every couple days. He'll put a thermometer in the center of the bale. No sense putting it on the end because that's cooler. The center of the bale is where your heating is. That's your biggest biomass in here. And that's where the heat is gonna be the greatest. So always check the center of the bale, take a piece of rebar pipe, pound it in there. Leave it sit for 10 minutes. If you pull it out, 
and it's cool, you don't have an issue. If it's so hot you can't haul, hang on to it, you got to move those bales outside so that the heating can dissipate and the heat can get out. So really important, it doesn't burn up overnight. It's a 21 day process. As long as you check it daily, you'll smell some heating or some steaming and stuff. You'll see the bales getting hotter slowly. Then it's time to take some action to move them outside on the slab, put them around, or do like this guy does and basically left them outside in the field and um, until they basically cool off and you should be fine as well too. We just don't want any more barn fires. Be really, really careful when you're making big bales. Check them on a daily basis. All it takes is one bale that's got a little bit more ryegrass in or in a low dip. I always get the baler guys to give a little bit of orange string. And if they hit a bale that's 20% moisture, put a piece of orange string on. Those ones you put separately and you feed them first. The ones that are dry, you can then put in storage. So be careful how you do it. All it takes is one bale out of 300 to catch the whole stack on fire. So with the big bales, this guy has stored them inside the barn now. And um, so we spaced them about two and a half feet apart. He stacked them three high, which is fine. But now you can still walk in between the bales, stick your hand around the middle and see if there's heating or sweating going by. This guy has bought a thermometer online and he sticks them in the center of the bales. And he was telling me anything over 90 degrees when he, he takes them out and he cuts them open and starts feeding them right away. So he's checking the bales on a continual basis to make sure they don't get hot. Another thing you gotta watch is your insurance covers mainly they will not cover big bales stored in a barn for the first 30 days. After 30 days then you're insured for these big bales. So check your insurance coverage too because lots of times if the hay burns up in 21 days your barn or your buildings are not insured. So read your insurance policy very carefully. Since we've had 20 fires over the last 30 years a lot of insurance company has written that in there that you cannot store big, big bales in your barn until 30 days after baling. So because then they know the heating process is basically done. If they haven't burnt up then the odds of them burning up are very very little. So again make sure you space them apart, be able to get in here, check them on a regular basis to make sure they're not heating and if you get by the 21 days and they're cool you should be in good shape.